Hi, Amy at Fashion Toppings, and I'm gonna tackle this really big, like it's a dress cover up. But you can see how wide, look at under the arms, how wide it is. What I've done to it already, which I didn't film, because uh, I did it in the middle of the night, this jacket was this, see the dark color at the top? The whole jacket was that. And it was screaming boring and so I decided to put it in bleach now I did um, I actually did it pretty strong bleach I did one part water to two part uh, two parts of bleach um, just because I was in a hurry I wanted to get it done and I wanted drastic bleaching and so what I actually did I'll pan down a little bit for you what I actually did see how long this jacket is I will be shortening it um, the bottom stayed in the longest and every five minutes I kept pulling it out just a little bit farther out of the bucket and, and then I stopped right here. And so you can see it gets from lighter, goes up darker. You can really see it in the back. You can kind of see the lines of where I pulled it out. And then I actually used a paintbrush and just brush bleach right on the collar because I wanted some color. The sleeves went in at the same time so you can kind of see where the line for me dipping. Then I rinsed it and threw it in the washer. Uh, all by itself, threw it in the washer all by itself. Uh, after I rinsed it, I threw it in the washer all by itself and washed it, threw it in the dryer, and this is how it turned out. It's so fun. I took the pockets off the front because I kind of wanted the look of the pocket, but I thought those pockets right there kind of looked matronly. Um, so I took the pockets off just for some fun decoration. Now, if you, if you want pockets, you can always sew the pockets on the inside, and then you can have a place to put your phone if you want to, but I really like the looks of where the pockets used to be. Now I need to shrink it down to make it fit me though. So I'm gonna turn this inside out and I'm gonna do kind of the same thing I did to that uh, men's denim shirt refashion, but I don't wanna take the sleeves off. I, I just want to do a quick refashion. I'm gonna size this down so it fits. I've already, did pinch and pin, but I took it out so I could show you. Okay, the arms are really long, but I'm not gonna shorten the arms because I wanna be able to roll it and slide it up. So I will be thinning the arms out, but I'm not gonna be shorting, shortening them, even though they are, I mean, they're pretty long. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is the pinch and pin method. You do need to button the, the shirt up. It's not that easy from the inside, but you need to button it up so that you make sure your center seam stays center while you're doing the pinch and pin. So I'm buttoning it up all the way down. Okay, now I'm gonna pinch for one side and then this side, you do it evenly so that you aren't having to zigzag the side seam. So I'm gonna do one pin on each side and I'm gonna squeeze it, see how tight I want it to come in. I do plan on wearing this. I gotta think about how I'm gonna put this through the sewing machine. Okay. I do plan on wearing this in the in the fall, so I need to make sure there's room in here for a flannel, a sweatshirt, or anything like that. So I'm not going super small. I'm taking it in. Oh, it looks like about an inch and a half, maybe two inches. So I'm just pinning. Now with the pinch and pin, with all my videos I've done, you make sure you take the same amount from the back as you're taking from the front. So smooth it out so that your side seam, the side seam is nice and smooth. You're not taking more from the back than you are the front. So you're just pulling it out and pinning. So equal, uh, equal amount of fabric from the back as you do the front. And okay, make sure that's center. Now go to this side. I'm taking a, almost a full thumb. So I've got, so it's gonna look like this. It's gonna go from this to this. Okay, so I got two pins down. Next one. Keep working my way up. This side, and then the same spot on this side. So I'm keeping this centered. Okay, I'm gonna do that all the way down 
up to the armpit. Okay, now that I've gotten the most important part, right to the hip line, I know that I'm gonna go straight down from there on. Once I, the hips are your widest part of your body, well, for most people, and so once you've got it wide enough for your hips and you're comfortable with it, then everything else is gonna be straight down. So I can take it off now and just use a ruler and do the rest of the pin and pin, uh, the pinch and pin method, but I kinda wanna pinch underneath the armpit so I can take out some of this fabric in the armpit. I am gonna put a pin in the armpit. This is when it's nice to have a friend help you. But, okay. I just pinned it so I can feel about where I want the armpit. Okay, so now that I've got a few of the pins in so I know how much I wanna take off, I'm gonna go ahead and take, put it on, leave it inside out, lay it on the ground, and finish pinning, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have it all pinned. I still have it inside out because I don't want to lose my pins by flipping it inside right because I have the, the sleeves pinned and I can feel it. <laughs> but I want you to see how much of a difference it's gonna take. See how big this is? Here's my pin line. You can see the chalk line. I'm gonna fold it back on that chalk line where the pins are and that's how much I'm taking in. So I'm gonna go from this to this. So it, it'll look much more fitted. Now you can hourglass it if you want to, but I'm a flannels girl. I'm gonna be wearing flannels underneath this, leggings, and so I don't want a fitted look. So I am taking in the sleeves. You can see my chalk line right here, and then my pin line. So I am taking it in a little bit on the sleeves. You, there you go, you can see the pin line. So you, uh, if you wanna take in your sleeves instead of removing them like I did my other shirt, just follow the seam line and continue through the armpit and right down the arms. That's an easy way so you're not having to deconstruct, remove the arms, put the arms back on. I just want this to be quick and easy. So I'm gonna be taking this to the sewing machine and doing um, a straight stitch because this is not stretchy fabric. A straight stitch is all I'm gonna use. But first I need to decide how long I want this um, jacket to be. Right now it is way too long. It's, look at that way too long. So I'm kind of thinking I want it right to, let's, let me show you, right to like where my shorts are. So right to my thighs, the middle of my thighs. So I'm gonna be shorting, uh, sh making this shorter, but on top of that, since I have all this funky stuff going on, I'm gonna actually not hem the bottom. I'm gonna put a zigzag stitch around about an inch up from the bottom, and I'm gonna leave it frayed. And then every time I wash it, the whole bottom of this will be frayed denim. And if I don't like it, I can go back and, and you know, the way it, it's washing up and how it's getting becoming distressed, if I don't like it, I'll hem it. I'll trim it and hem it. So let's just give this a try. I'm just gonna mark how, I'm just taking a pin, I'm gonna mark how long I want it and make sure I don't have my shorts caught in there. Okay, so I have it marked with the pin. I can take it off. Okay, so what I did is I measured down from the pockets um, to make sure that it's gonna be uh, even, and I pinned it, and then I measured from the bottom hem up so that I know that I have, you can see the chalk line right here? That way I know my chalk line, my bottom hem is gonna be straight. So I measured from the pockets, but I also measured from the bottom hem just to make sure, sure everything's gonna lay nice and smooth and straight. I did button the jacket up before laying it down and then flattened out all the fabric so it's nice and smooth. So button it up, measure across, chalk line it, and now I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Okay, so you take the bottom of this off. I now have a shorter jacket, and now it's time to take it to the sewing machine. I do have gold thread in, which matches the already existing thread they use for their seams, so it matches. And now all I have to do is start doing a straight stitch. So I'm starting at the sleeve, the side of the sleeve under here. And as careful as I was about my pinning, I still have my pins in backwards. I'm always doing that. So I'm gonna have to take the pins out in advance because they're facing the wrong direction. 
Okay, I'm just gonna be doing a straight stitch and I'm gonna be following my pin line. This is my sleeve to my armpit and then all the way down the side seam. I'm just following that curve of the whole side of the jacket. So start with a straight stitch, my needle in the down position. I'm starting in the current side seam. Zoom in. I'm actually starting right on there, the side seam that already exists, and then I'm gonna merge into my pink chalk line. So when I cut the fabric, I won't end up with a hole. So I'm gonna do a stitch fix or back stitch. I'll probably do both. Okay, and now I'm just doing a straight stitch and I'm gonna follow my chalk line. Making sure that you're feeling that the fabric is nice and flat as you're taking your pins out. Okay, now I'm getting to the armpit. That's, here's the, the, whole, the seam to the arm, the sleeve that's joining onto the jacket. I'm coming to that point and I'll be doing a slight curve down my side seam. I'm gonna do a fixed stitch or a back stitch. I'll do a back stitch over that side seam just so it's gonna be stronger. And then back again. Just because the armpit is what takes the most wear and tear, the pulling and tugging is usually in the armpit area. So I just want to back stitch over that area and then continue down my seam line. curve and that's why it's nice to have the chalk line so you have something to follow okay to rotate and then straight down the side make sure things laying flat do a back stitch because I'm getting close to the bottom I'm just doing a back stitch just to be safe and then I'll go forward Oops. I get towards the end I'll do my thick stitch The reason I did that back stitch up farther is because I know I'm not going to be hemming this and I'm going to be putting a zigzag stitch around it. So when the fabric frays, I don't want it to fray um, above my bottom seam line. Okay, now it's time to try this on. I love having the shorter length. Okay, that fits much better. Okay, so now that it fits, I'm going to cut that extra fabric off. And I'm gonna go just about a half inch to a quarter inch away from my stitch line. Okay, so I took quite a bit of width off this jacket. I cut off the excess fabric and now I'm gonna do that to the other side real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I cut my excess fabric off, the only thing I have left to do, you can go along your rough edge with a zigzag stitch where you just cut just to keep it from fraying. You can go all along the edge with a zigzag stitch. That'll keep it from fraying. But the step I'm going to next is I'm gonna go ahead and at the bottom, I want that frayed, tattered bottom that I've been seeing on Pinterest. I want that frayed tattered bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew a zigzag stitch, not right on the edge. I'm gonna go up about a half inch and I'm gonna sew a zigzag stitch all along the bottom, 
which means my denim will fray up to that point. Every time I wash it, get a little bit more fraying. So I'm just gonna do a zigzag stitch a half inch away from my bottom hem, all the way down the bottom of the jacket, and it'll give it a little decorative touch, but also I really want that rugged look of the distressed denim at the bottom. So let me go do that real quick and then I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, so I just did a simple zigzag stitch. You can see right there, all along the bottom of my shirt, our jacket. And there's the back. Kind of holds that placket into place too. So let's try it on. This is gonna be my favorite jacket this fall, or one of my favorite jackets this fall. I love all that dyeing. I have a shirt just like this, but it's not a jacket. Okay, oh, I like how it turned out. And then eventually, as I wash it, the bottom's gonna get the strings and the tattered at the bottom. And if I decide I don't like that, then all I need to do is take the shirt, fold it over once, and stitch it again. Or fold it over twice, it matters how much length you want to take off it. If you, uh, if you fold it, then you have a finished bottom and you won't have the strings. You can zigzag again on your edge to keep it from fraying any farther and then roll it. So if you don't like the tattered look, just zigzag your edge, fold it, and do a straight stitch for your finished hem. But um, this jacket was way too big before, and this is how actually I would wear it. I would roll up sleeves. See, I would roll up the sleeves like this, and this is how it looks. Love how it turned out. Okay, well this is Amy with Fashion Toppings with another refashion. This is a quick and easy sizing down the jacket, doing a little bleach, which I'll put links down below to the two videos that show you how to do this. Um, I did it to other shirts, so I didn't want to repeat it in this video. But to size down this jacket in a little simpler way than I did before with the other denim men's shirt size down, which I actually removed the sleeves. It was, a le it was much more labor intensive. This is a quick and easy way. Took in this big baggy giant, denim jacket duster, size it down, cut off the length. I'm gonna throw it in the washer now so I can get the bottom to start fraying and it'll be nice and distressed with a little bit of character. And that's it. Okay, well Amy is fashion toppings. Until next time, you have a great day.